Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2022-23 season. My name is Dan and today we are doing a Game Week 20 episode of the 100 Experts series. The videos where we have a look at the data from 100 FPL experts and see what they are up to. What transfers are they making? What chips are they using? Who are they captaining? What are they doing this week? And can we try and find out some data from these moves? And I love this video. This video helps me out so much with my own decision making, uh, especially up for coming up with some ideas that maybe I hadn't thought of and there was a few surprises in the data this week so i think you're gonna like this one guys if you do please do leave a like please do subscribe if you want to see more of this content every single week but uh without further ado guys let's meet the 100 experts that helped me out today so the 100 FPL experts, pundits, content creators and enthusiasts who have helped us out with some data for this week are on screen right now. Thank you so much to all of these people. Just to give a couple of mini shout outs here, we've got Fantasy Zadankai, which is the biggest Japanese FPL community. We've got on here as well, James Cartmel, who is actually looking to win FPL this year. He's in the top couple of hundred players in the world at the moment, so crazy stuff. And then we've got people like Dan Cross, Count Seelor, the moderators of this channel as well. So loads of people on there, all amazing. FPL managers and let's see what they're doing this week in game week 20. Well, to give an overview, 39% of them are using one transfer this week, 36% of them are using two transfers, 13% are using three or more transfers with one of those uh, people of the 13%, so 1% actually using four transfers this week. So you can see here, guys, already that this is really is a big week to make a lot of transfers. It seems like more than, uh, well, certainly more than half of our managers are making two or more transfers. So this is a week to potentially switch stuff up and try and get that decent squad for the double game week. We've got 4% actually on a wild card this week. So it is a potential wild card week. This is not a, like a mega number for wild cards, but certainly if you're finding yourself in a situation where you look at your team, you don't like it, you kind of want to take like a minus 12 or minus 16, then maybe it's start time to start thinking about maybe using the wild card there as well, possibly. But I think most of you guys are probably going to be okay with two or three transfers instead, which means hits. I know it means hits. A lot of our FBO experts are taking hits this week so don't be too afraid of that and we have got actually eight percent of our managers not making a transfer at all hopefully trying to save an extra transfer for the potential double game week 21 uh, slash double game week 22 because we are going to get some double game week announcements very soon that are going to be happening uh, over the next couple of weeks similar to what we have with manchester united where we've got a surprise double game week we're going to have a few more surprise double game weeks but of course us fpl nerds kind of at least half see them coming so there we go that is the overview of what our uh, uh, expert managers are up to. So as I always like to do in these videos, first of all, what we're going to do is look at the uh, most popular 12 players in the overall FPL player base, all 11 million players. What are they doing? Who are they transferring in? What are the, the overall trends not including our experts. Uh, well, they're on screen right now. And we can see Rashford is the most popular transfer uh, in the world as at time of recording. Uh, 390,000 uh, transfers in, which is quite significant. Shaw up there as well with 344,000. So yeah, those two Manchester United players, very, very big, very, very popular. Kane following closely behind in third as well. But there are some other surprising players in there like Mitrovic. Didn't really expect to see him in there. Don't really understand that one. We'll talk about that one in a, in a little bit more detail shortly. Shortly. Uh, but yeah, those are the most popular transfers. And what I like to do is see if our experts agree with these popular transfers. And I can tell you that there is a degree of agreement, I suppose, uh, among these. So the top transfers here, Rashford, Short and Kane, are also being fairly heavily transferred in by experts as well. So these are, generally speaking, good picks. Uh, aside from that, we've got De Bruyne in there, fairly popular as well. But it's only really these four that are kind of gaining any traction among experts. So maybe there is a slight disparity there between our experts, what they want to do, and what the overall player base wants to do. And I think the big key thing here really is that experts are going for double game week players, whereas a lot of other people are maybe not considering the double game week so much. So maybe you guys need to be thinking a lot about Double game week, get that brain focused on double game week players and maybe pretty much ignore all other players. Uh, in terms of players who on this list who our experts hate, who do they do not want to bring these players in at all. In fact, they even want to sell these players. They are as follows. Mitrovic, Cher and Saka. So absolutely no interest in these players. These players are, well, one of these players in particular is being sold quite heavily as well by our experts. So yeah, definitely. I know these are very popular players among the overall player base, but these are players we probably want to be avoiding. And I tell you what, guys, if we can avoid these players that a lot of other people are going, 
going for that's actually going to put us in a really good position and stick with those really really nice high value double game week high scoring potential players go for those guys instead and uh, hopefully we can get some real advantage over the overall player base particularly if your rank is kind of i don't know like around 500,000 or less, you're going to have a real advantage by going for these expert picks rather than the casual picks, if you like. Let's uh, let's move on to the next page because we want to talk about Mitrovic just a little bit more. And that's because Mitrovic is the fourth most popular transfer out among experts. He is actually being sold by quite a lot of people. So yeah, definitely not a player you want to be buying and arguably a player you want to be selling if you do have him in your team. His fixes are very, very poor from here on. He's got obviously Newcastle next, one of the best defences in the league. So we're not really expecting Mitrovic to have too many opportunities against uh, against Newcastle there. But uh, surprisingly, guys, we have got uh, Cancelo right at the top. Now, I know this is a real controversial one at the moment. Should we sell Cancelo? Should we keep Cancelo? Well, 30 out of 88 of our experts making transfers this week suggest that he's definitely a player we can consider selling. Uh, but also, the fact that it's 30 rather than, you know, 40, 50 also tells us that maybe there is opportunity to keep him. Do we think Cancelo is going to get game time over the double? Well, it's very clear that he's out of favour, but you would expect him to get some minutes. Are those some minutes going to be good enough? Is he going to get 60 minutes under his belt in one individual game to get a clean sheet, for example? Well, possibly not. Possibly not. So, yeah, Cancelo is definitely a very popular transfer out among experts, and I feel like that is a move that you can make, particularly if you've got some other defenders that you'd quite like to get in your team. Cancelo seems like an obvious sacrifice to do that. Uh, we've also got the Liverpool boys in here. Salah and Darwin Nunez are high on the sell list, I suppose. So, yeah, more players that you probably could really think about removing. You know, these are very expensive players as well. So, if you're thinking about getting players from, I don't know, Man United, Man City, uh, Spurs, the three big teams that are doubling this week, then you are going to have to sacrifice players from other big teams, other expensive players. Uh, so that's kind of why those guys are being sold right now. A lot of people have lost a lot of confidence in Liverpool in general at the moment as well. I would be a little bit careful about that because Brighton have been a fairly weak defence under the Zerbi and there's nothing wrong really with Liverpool's attack other than they're not really finishing their chances. But aside from that, guys, these guys are really heavily sold. And then you can see aside from that, we've just kind of got a, a lot of other random players that maybe some people still have kicking around their teams not quite good enough Andreas nine uh being sold, sold that's uh that's kind of interesting to see that some formation changes there some people move into like Matoma for example Reese James if he's still kicking around in your team you're probably going to want to sell him same with Mount you've got Kukurea in there as well who uh is obviously another Chelsea player so the Chelsea players are another you know team that we're probably going to be looking to sell the players from Chelsea um and uh there's Foden there as well which I think is probably the last interesting one on this list uh Foden is definitely a player that is a uh, minutes risk for this game week so a lot of people are losing patience with Foden and you can kind of understand why uh maybe Patterson is worth a mention as well a few people are actually removing Patterson and replacing him with a slightly more expensive uh defender so if you've got a Patterson or, or a Bueno and maybe you just kind of want to you know we've got a load of spare cash and you want to get more decent defenders in your team maybe you bench them some weeks maybe you play them some other weeks then that's definitely an option there as well but yeah those are basically uh, your, your trends now one final thing I should mention whilst we're talking about these transfers out because we are seeing a lot of Liverpool transfers out and a lot of Chelsea transfers out there is a possibility for a Liverpool and Chelsea double game week in game week 21 so just think about that one before you uh, make the sale consider it do you think it's a little bit of a risk there are we going to get any news before the deadline not 100% sure on that one but you know it's just something to consider before you make the sale and make sure you're okay with that before you do go ahead and make the sale but these are your transfers out what kind of players are being brought in what is our watch list for game week 20 and I say watch list because I really feel like the most popular players being brought in by experts are usually, it's usually a list of the best players to buy for Game Week 20. And that's exactly what we've got in front of us here. And I pretty much agree with it. I pretty much agree with most of these players. That all of these players are great additions to your team. And, you know, if you haven't got some of these players, particularly towards the top of this list, then they are going to be your primary transfer targets for this week. So, biggest surprise probably in this entire video, for me personally, was seeing Harry Kane as the most popular transfer in. I did not see that one coming at all. I really did not expect that at all. Yes, Harry Kane has been in some amazing form, but I just didn't uh, kind of imagine so many people would be restructuring their team to get Harry Kane in. And that's exactly what people have been doing. So kudos to any of you guys who already have Kane. We're ahead of the crowd, my friends. But certainly Harry Kane, if you haven't gotten already for the double game week that we're going to see for Spurs yeah, th this week is going to be, I don't know, 
know, fairly nice for some of those uh, Spurs attackers, you know. We've got games against Man City and Arsenal. Obviously, tough fixtures in general, but these are fixtures that you probably think Harry Kane could maybe do the business in. Now, John Stones is by far the most popular um, Man City defender to bring in. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about Man City defenders. Well, according to the experts, John Stones is your friend. We're kind of seeing, you know, Kane and Stones. We're talking about a quarter of all of our experts bringing in these players. That's quite significant considering a lot of them already have Kane already. Could see Kane at like 50% ownership among experts. John Stones, we're probably going to see him at like 25% ownership among our experts as well. So that's going to be um, pretty significant uh, and, and Stones is definitely a player we want to consider. De Bruyne maybe not getting as much representation as he could do. I know a lot of people already own De Bruyne so maybe even though he's only been transferred in by 20, his overall ownership is actually going to be pretty high. So that's going to be a very big one as well. Same with Shaw, same with Rash, but these are kind of of players that a lot of people have already but those people you know maybe you're in this category where you haven't quite got onto a sure you haven't quite got onto a Rashford yet you didn't pick them up in previous game weeks now is the time to correct that and get them in now that they've got a double game week and they become you know pretty much essential players high scoring players in a double game week you can't really go wrong there as well Martial another Manchester United player there Hyunmin Son if you want to take that punt a few people going for him and we've got the likes of, of Maris in there as well uh, Ferguson is a 4.5 million forward he's doing quite well for Bryson at the moment and he's maybe going to continue to be their number nine potentially and we've got Rico Lewis there another Man City player but what you will notice about these players guys is that aside from um, Botman who is playing for you know a fantastic Newcastle defence and it's only 4.4 million so incredible value there and Ferguson who is essentially a bench player that maybe you play him in a double game week if he continues to start for Brighton aside from that what we're really seeing here guys is uh all double game week players. So what this tells me, and I kind of I touched on this earlier, is that the only transfers worth making this game week are transfers for double game week players. So you want to be getting those uh, Spurs players, Manchester United players, Man City players. And if you're tra using your transfers, particularly if you're taking minus fours to get players in who don't have double game weeks, that's probably a bit of a waste of a minus four, a bit of a waste of a transfer, unless you're, you're kind of forced to do it to try and rearrange your budget, restructure your squad. Really, we do want to be focusing as much as we can on double game week players and, uh, you know, just getting them in, making sure we're set up uh, to get the most amount of fixtures. I kind of mentioned this in a video a couple of days ago, but I reckon if you can get to five or six double game week players for game week 20, you're going to be in a really good position. So let's suggest some transfers or how you might do that, how you can squeeze in some double game week players. Uh, these are the suggested transfers based on the data from our experts. All right, so Darwin Nunez out and Harry Kane in. A little bit of a difference there between their prices. But if you have the budget in the bank or you can kind of use multiple transfers to free up some budget elsewhere, then this is certainly a very, very popular move and probably the most popular way to get Harry Kane into your team. If you're fed up with Cancelo, moving him to John Stones seems like an obvious move. Uh, I would say certainly doing a free transfer to move Cancelo to Stones, I would definitely do that. If you're using minus fours, then you may want to kind of think about it a little bit more. But Stones seems like he's the most nailed on uh, Man City defender at the moment. If, you, if that's what you want to do, you want to get in that nailed Man City defender in there, then Stones is probably going to be your answer. And on this page as well, we've got Salah to De Bruyne, really, really popular transfer. Um, it kind of seems like a bit of a no-brainer in many ways. Yes, Salah could have a double game week in 21, but we don't know about that at the moment. And what we do know about De Bruyne is that he's got a double game week in 20 and another double game week in 23. And when De Bruyne is fit, which he is, uh, he is going to be playing pretty much every single game for Man City, which means we can maximise our Man City players over multiple double game weeks. De Bruyne is definitely a very, very good player to bring into your team right now if you have that capability, if that is possible for you. I would definitely, definitely be thinking about about that very, very strongly, particularly if you've got Salah and it's a very easy switch to go Salah to De Bruyne. Some alternative transfers here and we've got Cancelo to Shaw. If you don't have Shaw in your team yet uh, and you're looking to remove like Cancelo, then, you know, Shaw is also a very good answer to that problem. You know, similarly, if you've got Reese James in your team, Reese James to Shaw works as well. Whatever defender you have in your team basically right now, if you don't have Shaw yet, 
you know, remove that play that defender you don't really want and get Shaw in. Uh, similarly with Rashford, if you don't have him yet, you're really going to have to make that move somehow. I've put Salah to Rashford in here as well, uh, just because I kind of like the idea of pairing the Salah to Rashford move with a Mitrovic to Kane move and making that multiple transfers there that you can see on screen and, and kind of moving the money to the forward position. Then you can get Rashford in your team and you can get Kane in your team. You can have two of the most popular, highest, uh, you know, highest predicted points players for game week 20 by making two fairly straightforward moves. And I think that works very well. But obviously, if you've got other midfielders that you want to get rid of, Mason Mount, for example, we saw him in the highly sold category. You want to move him to Rashford. If you want to rearrange your budget a little bit and move maybe Andreas Pereira to Rashford, that works as well. And Mitrovic, obviously a player that a lot of people are removing ahead of his poor run of fixtures, even though Mitrovic is still an insane player. But maybe he's a kind of a way for you to get to Harry Kane without sacrificing some of those other forwards that maybe you'd actually quite like to keep in your side. Okay, and finally on to captaincy. And what I should also mention as well is that we have got a few experts using their triple captainship this week. Yes, 7%. So seven of our experts are using the triple captainship. That is a little bit less than I thought it would be. I thought I kind of thought it would be more around 20%, but actually it's as low as seven at the moment. Whether some people kind of get more tempted as we approach deadline, that might be a possibility there as well. But for now, 7% on the triple captain. And no surprise, the majority of those triple captains are on Erling Haaland. 90% a captaincy on Haaland overall among our experts, which is not 100%, but it's still a serious, serious trend. You would have to be pretty brave to go against Haaland on this one, I think. Uh, but yeah, there are a couple of other options. We have got Harry Kane in here. Uh, we have got, uh, we got what, Human Son in there as well. So a couple of people going for Spurs players. And uh, of, of course, we've got Marcus Rashford. So Marcus Rashford is kind of the alternative to Haaland at the moment. Uh, Rashford's form has just been so good recently that I just feel like you can't completely ignore him. You definitely got to own him. And I think maybe Rashford's like effective ownership could exceed 100% this week. I, I really think it potentially could. But yeah, Haaland's still the most popular captain. Like it's not, you know, we've got some other alternative captain options here, but we've got nothing really significant. And those of you guys who have noticed that this is not quite adding up to 100%, that's because one person is captaining De Bruyne. But because it's 1%, that's not a trend and it doesn't make it into the graphics of the video. But I know a few of you guys will have noticed that uh, we're only on 99% here, but the other guy is De Bruyne. But yeah, certainly... Obvious captain, once again, is Erling Haaland. Boring, boring, I know, but this is FPL this year. It's a one-man captaincy army, pretty much, at this point. And uh, a few people will actually be uh, triple captaining Haaland as well. So, yeah, it's uh, tr on, on, in terms of triple captain, uh, according to this data, it's not really obvious whether you should go for it or not. I will speak a little bit more tomorrow on whether I'm going to be triple captaining or not, because it's definitely something in my mind. Um, but, yeah, it's not super popular this week among experts, so maybe... Be, might be worth holding on to it but it's an option it's an option at least and there we have it guys that is the end of the video if you did enjoy this one please do leave a like please do subscribe as well if you're new around here um, but yeah i just think this video has just been so useful for me gathering the data and presenting it to you guys um, it's probably helped me um more than it's helped you maybe i don't know uh, but it's certainly been really really useful particularly to see some of the kind of players that people are bringing in and some of the players that are being sold crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy world among our experts, but uh, a lot of people are going crazy with the transfers this week. Double game weeks, they bring out the best and the worst in us as well. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that one, guys. Uh, my team selection video is going to come tomorrow. We are going to be talking about the triple captainship as well as what transfers I'm going to be making, so stay tuned for that one. But for today, that's going to be it. So thank you so much for watching, guys, once again, and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.